Today we're going to learn how to determine a formula given some mass data. Okay, so we were given we were given a formula in our last set of notes and asked what the mass percent of each element is. Well, today what we're doing is we're going to go the opposite direction. So what if we're given a percent by mass data? So we know what percentage of the mass is coming from which elements and then are asked to determine the formula. Okay, so of course a formula, an example of that would be like carbon dioxide. Okay, so if we are given mass percent data, can we use that mass percent data and go back? to figure out the formula. Now one thing to keep in mind is that there are two kinds of formulas. There is the empirical formula and that is the lowest whole number ratio of subscripts. And then there is the molecular formula which is an actual formula and in order to be able to figure out the molecular formula, you need to have the molar mass of the compound to determine that. Okay, so um, when we're dealing with molecular formulas, oftentimes the same elements make up different molecules, and the difference between them is that they have different varying amounts of of each element in, in the different particular formulas. Okay, so empirical lowest whole number ratio of subscripts, molecular is the actual formula. You need to have the molar mass given to you in the problem to be able to determine it. Okay. So here's our, here's our problem for today. Determine the empirical formula for vitamin C, ascorbic acid, given the following mass percent data. So we're given data that this compound is 40.92% carbon by mass, 4.58% hydrogen by mass, and 54.50% oxygen by mass. And we want to know what is the empirical formula, so in this case it's simply going to be the lowest whole number subscripts, um, for this thing. Now, in order to do this, we always assume that we're starting with 100 grams of material. And we do that for, um, for convenience sake. And so... If we've got 100 grams and 40.92% of it is carbon, how many grams of carbon do we have in that 100, 100 gram um, sample? We have 40.92 grams. So see, it just makes it easier if we think, of, think that, okay, we're going to sort this out by we've got 100 grams of this material. So that would mean that if we've got 100 grams of this material, we would say that 40.92 grams of it is going to be carbon. 4.58% of it is hydrogen, so that means 4.58 grams of it is going to be hydrogen. And then 54.50% of the mass is coming from oxygen, so that means we've got 54. Five, zero grams of oxygen. Okay, so that makes it really easy for us to just say, all right, I'm going to take these percentages and I'm going to make them into grams. And we can work with grams. Now, let's go back and look at this formula that I had up here before, which was carbon dioxide. So in this formula right here, is it telling us that oxygen is contributing 
twice the amount of mass as carbon? Is that what these subscripts mean? No, they don't. It means that for every two atoms of oxygen in this molecule, I have one atom of carbon. So this, these subscripts are representing pieces. So we could also think of it as for in this, in this molecule, for every two moles of oxygen, I have one mole of carbon. Okay, so that's what the subscripts are describing. The number of pieces of the thing. The number of pieces of the thing. And so, when we look at this grams data, grams aren't going to help us. I mean, they're going to help us, but that's not what the subscript of a formula is describing. So, our first step after we have conveniently changed these percentages to grams is to now change these grams to what? To change those grams to moles. That's what we need to do. So, let's do this. 40.92 Hi, Ian. Grams of carbon. these grams to moles, which, what, what is our conversion factor to go from grams to moles? That's going to be the molar mass. Where are we going to find the molar mass? We're going to find it on the periodic table. All right, so let's put this over one, and the molar mass of carbon is going to be 12.01 grams of carbon for every mole of carbon. For hydrogen, let's go ahead and put this over one and say there are 1.01 grams of hydrogen per mole of hydrogen. And then let's go ahead and put this over one and say that for oxygen, there are 16 grams of oxygen for every mole of oxygen. So then our grams are going to cancel all the way down here, leaving us with the number of moles of each of these compounds. So our number of moles come out to be 3.407 moles of carbon and 4.54 moles of hydrogen and 3.406 moles of oxygen. All right, so great, we've converted it all to moles. Now, have you ever seen a formula that looked like this? C, 3.407, H, 4.54, O, 3.406. Ever? Have we at this point ever seen a formula like that? No. We're not going to have parts of atoms, uh, 0 0.407 of a carbon in a compound, right? We're, we're going to only have whole numbers of those atoms. So we've got to take some more steps here. We can't have anything that's going to look like that. So our next step is we are going to divide each of these by the least number of moles. So what is our least number of moles? It's going to be here with oxygen, 3.406. So 
So we had 3.407 moles carbon, and we had 4.54 moles hydrogen, and then 3.406 moles oxygen. So our next step, you need to write this down because I'm not writing it down, is divide by the least number of moles, which is this, 3.406. So I'm going to divide each one of these by my least moles. So by 3.406, 3.406, Now, why do I do that? Well, I do that because at least I know one of them is going to come out as a whole number. So this one's going to be 1 mole of O. This one is going to come out to be 1 mole of C. So at least we know what their two ratios are in the empirical formula. And then for hydrogen, this thing is going to come out to be 1.33. So we're still not done because we've got this one here. We've got this 1.33. And all of these have to be in their lowest possible whole number ratio. So then what we have to do is if when we divide by least moles, if that doesn't give us all whole numbers, then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to we're going to just try. Um, we're going to try different integers to see which integer um, will, um, will give us a whole number. So if we multiply each of these by 2, does that give us three whole numbers? No, it doesn't. That's going to give us 2.66, which is not going to work. But what about if we multiply them all by 3? If we multiply them all by 3, 1 times 3 equals 3. 1.33 times 3 is going to equal what? 4. And 1 times 3 is going to equal 3. Alright, so what are our steps here? We first of all change our percentage to grams making this assumption. Then we have to change all of our grams to moles using molar mass. And then once we have the moles of all of the constituents, then we, if those aren't whole numbers, sometimes you'll end up getting all whole numbers here and you're done. Okay, but what if you don't? Then we're going to divide each of those by the least amount of moles that we have, so that at least we'll get one whole number, and in this case we got two. And then if that doesn't give us whole numbers, our very last step is to then just guess and check, guess and check. Uh, we'll start with two, then three, then four, until we figure out an integer that we can multiply them all by that will give us all whole numbers. And so in this case, that integer was going to be 3. Okay, so now we have everything in a whole number ratio. They are in a 3 to 4 to 3. So the empirical formula is going to be C3H4O3. Okay, that is the empirical formula for vitamin C, ascorbic acid. Okay, so I'm going to write that on the next page. So, empirical formula is C3H4O3. Now, in the problem. If they would have said, okay, determine the molecular formula.
Because remember, this is empirical. This is the lowest whole number ratio of the elements in this compound. But does that mean that this is the actual formula of vitamin C? Well, it might or might not be. And the only way we can know that is if we are given the molar mass of vitamin C. So, molar mass, and that has to be given to you in the problem. The molar mass of vitamin C is 176.14 grams per mole. Now, given that information and knowing the empirical formula for vitamin C, can we figure out the molecular formula? What is the molecular, the actual formula? Of vitamin C. So in order to figure out the molecular, we have to know what the empirical is, and we also have to know what the molar mass of vitamin C is. So now we have those things, let's figure out the molecular formula. In order to do that, it is going to be um, molecular This MM is molar mass over the empirical molar mass, okay, to get the ratio between the two. So the molecular molar mass is 176.14. How do we find the empirical molar mass? Well, here's the empirical formula. So we're going to multiply three carbons plus four hydrogens plus three oxygens to give us the empirical molar mass. And so the empirical molar mass is 88.07. So if we do that division, we end up getting a ratio of two. So what do you think we're going to do with this two? We're going to multiply each of the subscripts by this two, and that's going to give us the molecular formula. So we're going to say the molecular is going to be C by this ratio that we get here, and that will give us the overall molecular formula. Keep in mind, the only way that we can find molecular formula is if we are given the molar mass 